Welcome to the latest edition of Shannon's Club TV. If you've been following the show on the club website, you've no doubt enjoyed reliving some great memories from Australian roads and racetracks. In each episode, we reflect on the defining moments in our feature car's history and take an up-close look at an owner's example. We'll also get a market update from the Shannon's Auctions team. But for now though, let's get things rolling with the distinctively styled and luxurious Japanese car with a sporting edge, the Datsun 240K. The Datsun 240K is one of those cars that has acquired more respect with the passing of the decades. Picture the Australian automotive context of 1973 when this odd looking coupe made its debut in amongst the HQ Holdens, VH Valiants and XA Falcons. In 1973, Datsun was presenting itself as an almost schizophrenic brand. On the one hand, there was the wonderful 240Z. On the other was the boxy 1200 sedan, soon to be superseded by the 120Y, perhaps the ugliest and least charismatic small car in history. Superficially, the 240K seemed like an amalgam of these very different Datsuns, the 240Z and 120Y. It was confronting, like the 120Y, but had much of the driver appeal of the 240Z. That adjective schizophrenic is accurate in this sense. In 1966, Nissan merged with the Prince Motor Company. The Japanese automotive industry was coming of age and the government recommended mergers between companies to give the industry resilience against foreign takeovers. Mark, I think it's fair to say that by 1966, both Nissan and Prince had made their names in Australian motorsport. Oh yeah, I mean by the by the mid '60s, you know, we had uh, Datsun and Prince sedans competing at Bathurst, and of course the little Fair Lady sports car was starting to grab some headlines. So, when you look at that merger between those two companies, that was one of the most beneficial, I think, in motoring history. Those yes. you know, the synergies were very strong. Absolutely. And look at the wonderful product that came after in the late '60s into the early '70s: the Datsun 1000, the 1200, the legendary 1600. Yep. It just kept rolling and rolling. Really great little car that all perform well at Bathurst. Absolutely. Mm. Prince continued to operate independently and developed the Skyline GT for the second Japanese Grand Prix, where it filled second to sixth places behind a Porsche 904. The 1964 Prince Skyline GT is the true progenitor of the Datsun 240K, sold in other markets as the Skyline 240K, and produced from 1972 to 1977. Wheels said of the 240K, forget the styling and drive it. Initially, the 240K came only as a four-speed manual and cost a little more than an HQ Premier with a 308 V8 engine. In April 1974, the sedan variant arrived with the choice of manual or three-speed auto. Two years later, the two-door 240K, the hardtop, got a five-speed manual. While the handling was good, the 240K suffered from the vague recirculating ball steering system that was then the norm for Japanese cars, but it wasn't as bad as many peers. The 240K covered the standing quarter mile in 17.8 seconds, which was slower than an HQ 308, but quicker than a 253. Mark, did the 240K have the qualities to win in motorsport? Well, it wasn't immediately apparent against lighter and faster rivals, but you know, its sporting qualities really shone through in the rain at Bathurst in 1974. New Group C touring car rules introduced in 1973 featured a number of classes based on engine capacities. Datsun enjoyed great success with its extremely fast 1200 coupe in the smallest car class, but it also wanted to showcase the sporting prowess of its new 240k hardtop in the under 3 litre division. However, this was a difficult assignment as the class was being dominated by Mazda's Mercurial Series 2 RX3, armed with a 12A rotary engine with power to burn in a very light, sweet handling and aero efficient chassis package. By comparison, the larger and more luxurious 240k hardtop weighed at least 200 kilograms more than its Mazda rival with less power. It did have more torque from its 2.4 litre single overhead cam inline six and it boasted more sophisticated rear suspension. But the Mazda's crucial power to weight ratio 
was in another league. John, Datsun certainly used motorsport to create a, you know, a real sporting persona for so many of their models, didn't they? Well, they did. I remember when they had the, when they had the 1000 and the 1600. Mm. Both those cars were there at Bathurst and both were highly competitive in mm. their classes. And the little Datsun 1200 Coupe. I mean, these cars were competitive, but uh, what's impressive is that the 240k hardtop as I said, it was up against it against an RX3, but they could still see the benefit in getting that car out there and racing it just to you know, show its, its sporting prowess. And, and it did absolutely no harm whatsoever. It certainly didn't. That's right. With solid, if not winning results in its early outings, the factory-backed 240K hardtop was destined to put in its greatest performance at Bathurst in 1974, thanks to the immeasurable skill of multiple Australian Grand Prix winner, Doug Whiteford. Although aged in his early 60s, the decorated veteran proved the passing of time had not dimmed his raw speed or his enthusiasm. The lone 240K he shared with Stuart McLeod was two laps behind the runaway Mazda RX3 class leader when Whiteford stepped in for his second and final stint. But the whole complexion of the battle changed when it started to rain. In diabolical conditions, the Datsun became one of the fastest cars on the track with Whiteford carving minutes out of a huge lead, despite near zero visibility at times and rivers of water running across the track. If not for a punctured tyre, the maestro was well on track to catch and pass the leading Mazda and score an astonishing victory in a car not previously considered a threat to the rotary rockets. Even so, his second in class that year in the 240k hardtop will always be revered as one of the Bathurst 1000's greatest drives. Remember to join the Shannons Club, where you can connect with other enthusiasts around the country. My name's Louis, and this is my 1974 Datsun 240K hardtop. It's also known as a Nissan Skyline C110. I've got this car um, over a year ago, what you see is what I got it as. I just cleaned it, tidied it up, changed bits and pieces here and there, rust repairs and just basically a tune just to keep it going, running. The Datsun 240K, it came with a straight six cylinder 2.4 litre engine, overhead cam, alloy head, single downdraft carburetor. Front brakes are twin spot brake calipers and the rears are just drum brakes. I am a Shannon's customer. Um, I've been with them with this car and they've been great. 240K seems to me to follow the lines of history and generations of Skylines, which I've always been into. I've been into Nissans and Datsuns, all other cars, but my favourite is probably the Skyline due to the history as well as was the Godzilla of basically racing because it was so powerful and they won events. The Datsun 240Ks, they are part of racing history. Um, they raced under or competed under the Group C classifications of racing. They are known to race at some of the historic race tracks, which include the Adelaide, International Raceway, the Phillip Island Raceway, Sandown, as well as Bathurst. Well, Shannon's National Auctions Manager, Chris Borobon, joins us to bring us up to speed on the Datsun 240K. Welcome to the show, mate. Hey, Mark. Hey, Joel. G'day, the Datsun 240K. Goodness, it's a long time since I've seen one of those. <laughs> Have you had one through the auction in, in recent memory? No, I think we were discussing that. It's not something that we do see through the auction uh, house these days, but you know, I think you know they're becoming more popular again through the uh, domestic uh, Japanese market scene. Yeah. Um, you know, we're seeing yeah. the younger generations you know, getting back into the 240s uh, Ks, and I think probably the, you know, the hard top would probably have to be the more popular variant. Yeah, because you had a hard top and a sedan. Yeah, yeah. that's right. I think mm. it's, Chris, it's an inherently interesting car in a mm. way, because it was one of those first Japanese cars that had something of the appeal of a European car, almost like a Saab yeah. or a Peugeot, because it, it wasn't, yeah, yeah, it, it wasn't yeah. just an ordinary 
common or garden. More up market, yes, like it was. Upmarket Japanese. It was. Gun. I think yeah. you know, in, in its day, I think you know the the one eighty B and the two hundred B were probably the you know the entry point, and the two forty K was yeah. just had a well, little bit more uh, yeah. you know, to offer. The you could look at it another way that in in many respects Nissan really made a big mistake when they went from the sixteen hundred to the one eighty B, but you can see the two forty K is like the Datsun 1600, that sort of spirit of car a bit, rather than a, just a, a boring shopping trolley, which the yeah. 180B was. Yeah. There seems to be two types of buyer for this kind of car now. Like there's the heavily modified version, and sometimes you see an absolute showroom stock, your one or two owner car turn up. So there's there's two different uh, buyers that this yes. car appeals to, and, yeah. they, and they're quite segregated. It is, but, but mm. what's great is that actually they come together at the shows, mm. uh, you know, and I think the people yes. who've got the modified cars appreciate to see an original car that, you know, maybe had the little one lady owner, as we call it, uh, that's been found in a shed after 20 years and, uh, you know, has just been cleaned up and looks fantastic. But, so. but they're both acceptable, highly modified and showroom? Absolutely all, all, acceptable. Yeah. Um, you know, this whole JDM scene mm. is fantastic. Mm. Uh, they're, they're really... You know, we, we are seeing some of the, the modified cars. Well, what we are seeing do, uh, being done is is probably, you know, the Skyline version that we didn't get here in Australia. We, we're seeing, you know, a few people going down that path with the yep. bolt-on guards, the bigger wheels, um, yes. updated mechanicals at times. Mm. Um, so it, it's great. So if you wanted one, what's what's the suggestion? Get into this Japanese car club scene. Is that what, That's oh, where they're all hanging out, aren't they? That, that's what we, we tend mm. to find, uh, you know, that's where they are. And uh, look, that, that's a really good one. And I think, you know, the, the guys in the classic Japanese scene, you know, everyone's out there to help each other. Yep. And that's probably a great thing. So, mm. you know, get in contact with, uh, with the club and... Uh, with all with the clubs um, and and see what's out there. Great, thanks. Great advice. Thanks, thanks Chris. Very much, Chris. And remember, you can get all the latest Shannon's auctions news on the Shannon's Club website. If you'd like a lasting image of the Datsun 240K in competition, visit AutoPick's incredible motorsport photo archive. John, it's interesting looking back at the. Uh, these 1970s cars, you know, at the time they were sort of, in a lot of ways, considered throwaway items, just run them into the ground and get rid of them. But now, you know, there's this, there's this real passion, there's real interest in old Japanese cars, and this car is very much in that group. They showcase a whole automotive culture, really, mm. one, one which is now being appreciated more than it ever was before, I think. Yeah, because the Japanese, you know, when they started to, to get their car manufacturing up and firing, they set, you know, the model for the world to follow in how to do it. They certainly did, yeah. yes, absolutely. Yeah. And the 240K is a fine example of that, I think. Very good example of that yeah. era, yeah. Well, we hope you've enjoyed reflecting on the Datsun 240K. We look forward to your company next time on Shannon's Club TV. Bye for now.